Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This sermon will be our last sermon in reference to marriage. It'll be the end of our marriage series. Not that I'll never talk about marriage again, but we will. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is true of all married people, and even of single people dating someone. Don't turn your spouse boyfriend or girlfriend into an idol, into your God. Oh, I don't do that. I won't do that. Come on, pastor. I don't pray to my partner or burn incense to him or her. No, that is not what I am talking about. You can still treat a loved one as a God when that one becomes your greatest treasure, your everything. It happens all the time in romantic movies and romantic novels, and especially in pop music. Here's a classic pop song from 1967. I'm not going to sing it, but I am going to sing the word that you all know. Bernadette! They want you because of the pride that it gives, but Bernadette! I want you because I need you to live. In your arms, I find the peace of mind that the world is searching for. But you, you give me the joy this heart of mine has always been longing for. In you, I have what other men long for. All men need someone to worship and adore. That's why I treasure you and place you high above. For the only joy in life is to be loved. So whatever you do, Bernadette, keep on loving me. Bernadette! Keep on needing me, Bernadette! Now, if Bernadette leaves him, he will be destroyed. He won't be able to go on. If Bernadette dies, he will be destroyed. He won't be able to go on. Even if Bernadette fails, to, fails him somehow, betrays him, he probably will be destroyed. Boy, this guy has it tough. But what about Bernadette? She's got it really tough. There's a lot of pressure on that gal. This kind of thing shatters relationships and marriages. When idolatry enters into a relationship between man and woman, it can be a scary thing. What can happen? Well, one person can constantly be on pins and needles, walking on glass, making sure they don't disappoint the person who looks at them as their God. One person, through fear of losing the other or being disappointed by them, is constantly keeping tabs on that other person. They will keep their treasure at all costs. They will control that other person and grill them for information on their lives. Every move you make, every step you take, I'll be watching you. People might think that's romantic, but that's scary. It's idolatrous obsession. And even the group that made that song actually said, you know, actually this song is about a stalker who broke up with his girlfriend, and now he's stalking her. A person never, a person may never, because of idolatry, and elevating this person up to the greatest thing in their lives, a person may never recover from a spouse's death, divorce, or betrayal. And in some extreme cases, and we've all heard of this, 
The person will murder the other person. If I can't have you, nobody else can. And then they'll kill themselves too. Because what is life worth when you've lost your God? As people sometimes strike out against the true God because they feel he has let them down or betrayed them after all those years of going to church. People can strike out at false gods too who let them down too. But the thing is, you can't damage the true God, but you can damage human false gods, and that damage is not a pretty thing. It is important in a marriage and other relationships that the other person does not become a god. You see, humans are not meant to be gods. They can't hold the pressure of being a god without something going terribly wrong. There's only one man, one person, human being, who can be honored and held on to as a god, and it won't be too much for him. And that person also happens to be the true god, Jesus Christ. He's the god-man, Jesus Christ. You see, you need a nice, strong, firm hanger to hang a heavy leather jacket up on the wall. But if you try to hang up a heavy leather jacket on a thumbtack, well, eventually that thumbtack is going to bend and break, and the jacket will be on the floor, and the wall is going to be marred. If people put too much on their spouse as a god, each person in that relationship will wind up damaged, and the marriage will eventually lie on the floor. I must know where my value lies. And my value can't lie in my spouse. My value lies where? In Christ and him alone, not in any other. I am made by God, purchased by the blood of his son Jesus, and I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. God is guiding my life and guarding my life. My anxieties are cast on him. That's too much to put on another human being. Place this kind of thing on your spouse and you will damage them, damage yourself and your marriage. Now, before I go forward, I got to say this. If you're married to someone and you know what, they die, it's okay to mourn. It's okay to be sad. And there is this terrific period of adjustment. But we still live. Because, but because we haven't lost our God. Our Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. And so we carry on. Your spouse was not made to be your God. They were made to be a gift from the true God to you. Yes, and they were meant to be taken care of by you. They were meant to be God's gift to you that you take care of. And when you do that, you honor God. But don't turn that person into your greatest good, your greatest thing, your greatest treasure. Don't turn that person into your God. Does your spouse meet a need? Yes. But in the end, it is God who provides for that need through the gift of your spouse. Do I marry someone to gain my self-value? No, I marry someone so that I can be a servant to them. My value is all wrapped up in Christ. And I walk in the ways of Christ in my marriage. What is the way of Christ? We heard about it today, hinted about it today in the gospel lesson. Christ came to be the slave of all, to be the slave of the lowest. He gave his life as a ransom for many. And I walk in his ways. I enter in the marriage to be a servant to that spouse. And in so doing, honor God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the true God. Let's continue by confessing our, the creed, page six in your worship bulletins. Please rise.